Hi guys, PJ here. Today we are fitting a dash camera to a 2016 Ford Fiesta. We're going to hardwire this to the fuse box so that the uh, cigarette lighter socket doesn't get taken up. You know, it's uh, annoying having a wire drape down the window screen. So I'm going to go through basic step-by-step -step, uh, instructions of how to do that and how to uh, get the correct fuse, etc. You're going to need to start by emptying your glove box, because let's face it, everybody's glove box is full of crap. Pull the sides of the glove box in, there's some, like, some locating dowels. Do it both sides, sometimes very, very difficult to do, you're going to need both hands. Squeeze them in. Right, so when you've bent your tabs in, I just watch the little rubber doesn't come off the end here, because if it does, you have to shove it back on again. Your fuse box is located there, right at the back, okay? Quite tricky to get to. The next thing you're going to want to do is pop off this end plate. Now, to do that, you need a plastic pry tool, such as a Bojo tool there. Yeah, you can order these off eBay, for example. Don't try and use a metal screwdriver, you will dint the dashboard, it's only plastic, so don't do that. Get a plastic one, maybe even a thick filler scraper, but don't use metal. Just pry away at it, it's on poppers, they are quite sturdy, but you'll notice it come away. Just take your time with it. Always more difficult doing this sort of thing one-handed, so I'll just skip to where that's removed. And as if by magic, all the poppers are out, yeah. Pull the little rubber seal off. All you do to pull that off is pinch it and pull it forwards and it will come off. Just, there you go, get your connectors, little little poppers on there. Put that safely to one side. And like I say, to get this rubber trim off, all you do is squeeze it and pull and it just sort of comes off, yeah. Now take it off all the way up the pillar to the top, yeah. So you can get to there. You're going to need to get wiring behind that, which we'll get now. Now you're going to need your, uh, your cabling pack that you've purchased. There's a next base one here, again readily available from most motor accessory shops. It's just a hardwire dash camera kit. And if you open it up to see what's inside it, just uh, get everything out there, do that. You've got your main wire with your plug on that plugs into your dashboard camera, which is going to sit just dangling out of the roof lining. Plus and minus on the other end, yeah. And you get two fuse spurs, two fuse jumpers. Now. On this Fiesta, it uses the mini blade fuse, like so, yeah. The gap at the side of the fuse that's in there is for the one you remove from the fuse box to double up with. I will show you that in detail shortly. This fuse is used in a lot of older cars. It's the bigger variety. We're not going to be using that today, so that goes put to one side. The only other thing that comes in the box is this. It's basically a little magnetic filter, and you pop it open and put it round the cable. If you've got a dab air radio built into your car, you're going to need this on because you're going to lose signal reception big time. I'll show you how that fits in a second. In fact, we'll just go through this bit now. Just click it open. It's on little clips. Look, just open it up and you've got the, the magnet inside. Get your cable. Yeah. Drape that over it. You want it as near to the end as possible, ideally. And then sort of fold it over on itself like so. As if by magic there, a quick video edit, could have needed both hands. Just wrap it round, yeah? So you just wrap it round and then click the top shut. Now the next bit after this is something I do out of personal preference. This cable is going to be tucked behind your headlining, so we don't want it falling down while you're driving along. All I do is get a couple of zip ties, cable ties, and literally put them round the cable, yeah, a few inches apart from each other. Snip the ends off, so just take the end clean off it as such, and then wrap electrical tape around it. It just creates a little bit of a bump to hold it behind the headlining so it doesn't fall down. It's, it, it's always worked, it's never fell down, you know, whenever I've done this, so it's a good little tip to try and do. Right, skipping forward to the next step, you're basically going to want to put your wiring in the headlining, yeah? Now, don't go at it like a bull in a tight china shop, it is only a headlining, you don't want to damage it, yeah? So just carefully pull the headlining down a little bit with your fingers, Make sure your hands are clean, because if you've got beige headlining, it's going to end up absolutely filthy. Yeah, Tuck the cable in along the headlining, like so, to the corner. Now, at the corner, you're going to have to pull your plastic pillar forwards a little bit and hook your cable behind it. This is where you want your little plastic tool again, so you can shove your cable actually down snugly behind there. Once you've tucked it all in, follow on down the pillar with your cable, hiding it out of the way, and put your rubber seal back on so it holds it in place. Okay, so we've pushed our rubber trim fully home, 
cable tucked behind it, yeah, all the way down here. When you get down to this area, there's some bolts that uh, you're going to need to look at. You need an earthing point for your, for your cables. So your cables that come with the, the, uh, the wiring kit have a plus and a minus that I mentioned earlier on. There's your plus and there's your minus. Now the minus we're going to put to this bolt. This is a 10 millimeter bolt, so we're going to take that out right now. Don't worry, your dashboard won't move. It is holding by substantial sized other bolts. So we're just going to take that particular one out. You're going to need your ratchet and your 10 mil. Now, you'll notice I've got black sticky tape on the end of my socket. That is quite literally so I don't drop the bolt. So like I say, doing all this one-handed while holding the camera is not easy. If you shove it on like so, the bolt will stay put. Alright, so we'll remove the bolt. Bolt out. This is going to be your earthing point. Quite a long bolt, we are, you know, a big thing to hold the weight of the dashboard in. There we go. There we go, bolt up. Now we're going to connect our earth to it. So with the bolt removed, um, I've actually got a couple of washers and I've put my own ring connector on the end of it. You don't have to do with this, it does come with an open horseshoe uh, sort of spade connector that you can shove behind a nut or a bolt. I've sort of, well basically I've been at this 25 years and I've just got used to doing it this way, it's a better more secure connection. So you don't have to chop the connector off the end, you can use the uh, spade connector that comes with it, just personal preference. So once you put that in, yeah, on the bolt, just reattach to the dashboard, that's like I say a good earthing point, you've gone straight to the body of the car there, just tighten that up. Sorry about the background noise, if you can hear it, there's an awful lot of construction going on at the moment where I am. Alright, let's just tie that up, get your socket. Give it a bit of a nip, you know, it's a pretty big bolt. Once you've nipped it up, I will give that an extra tighten in a minute when I've got both hands free. Get your power side of the cabling and go through through the back of the plastic and thread it through here to where your fuse box is. Just pause my video there to get that through. And as if by magic or the blink of a camera, we now have all the cables pulled through from the other side. Yeah, So you, you can quite literally get your, your hand through, look to put your cabling through. You now need your power cable with this bullet connector on the end and you're going to want your mini blade fuse adapter that comes in the kit. This part, plug that onto the end, just onto there. I'll do that now. Okay, so with our connector all taped up and on, we're now going to look for what fuse we need to use to spur this off. Now you're looking for a power that is ignition switched. So you're going to get your multimeter um, or, you know, a little uh, screwdriver with a bulb in the end of it, as it were earthy multimeter to something yeah and then go through fuses now i've done a lot of these fiestas probably hundreds of them and i sort of know which fuse to use but i'll go through it for you you've got zero voltage reading at the moment we've turned the ignition on and we're now going to touch the top of this fuse voltage there 12.2 if we turn the ignition off and try the same thing which i'll do now just take the key out Touch the same fuse again and look back at your voltage, you're on zero, okay? So that is an ignition switched fuse, it's a red 10 amp, it's the second from the left on the bottom row. What we're going to do is remove that fuse, always remember which fuse you're removing because you've obviously got to put it back again. So uh, get yourself some long nose pliers. Or use the little tool that comes with the car, it's like a rubbishy little plastic thing that pulls fuses out. Yeah, take the fuse out, there's your 10 amp fuse. Now that 10 amp fuse that you've just pulled out goes next to this blade fuse here. So you pop that in there, yeah? Sometimes they're a bit stubborn and you need a pair of pliers just to get them straight in. There we go, all pushed in. So you've got the dark coloured fuse, the grey one is the supply to the uh, camera and the 10 amp is the original circuit that we've removed that from, okay? So we go back here, plug it back in again, like so, can you see that? That's into the, where the original fuse came from. So that's your power done, 
and your earth done. Your next step is to really take, tidy up all this loose cabling that we've got. So I'm just going to skip to that point where I've taped it all up neatly and hidden it away, cable tied it to some other bits and bobs to keep it safe and tidy. And there we go, all the cabling's all tucked up out of the way. I've cable tied the power cable to uh, the wiring harness just here. It's all, all nice and neat out of the way. Nothing can get caught by the glove box. After that, you're going to be looking at putting your end panel back on. I've just loosely pushed this in. Now, just pay attention to the top. There's a lug that goes behind the white plastic. So hook your top in and then quite literally just click it fully home all the way down. There we go. Click, click, click all the way down and then put the rubber trim back all the way. Once you've done that, you are then going to be putting your, your camera up top. Your glove box is simple enough, just flex the corners in and shove it back up. So we're just going to test the camera. I'll skip to that now. So with our car fully reassembled, it's time to test the camera. Put your ignition key on, put your ignition on, and the camera should come on. You'll notice I've got my little filter there that I was on about. You're going to need to put that on. And there we go, all done. So there we have it, that's all powered up and working. Um, if you have any questions about this or any electrical item being fitted into a car, it can be anything from a Ford Focus to a Rolls Royce Corniche. Take your pick, not bothered. Uh, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer you the same day. Sometimes I fail to get back to you the same day, but it uh, depends how busy I am. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.